Good morning and welcome to Donna Cloney Parish. Uh, we're glad that you can join us this morning in our online family service. Today we're going to look at a special topic. It's called the blood sign. And you'll find it in Exodus chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 14. Well, a couple of notices to draw your attention to as we begin our service this morning. Can I remind you that we are back to the in-church service, but at the minute we start uh, in the church hall. So we have the 11 a.m. service in the church hall at Warrenstown, in the Holy Trinity Church Hall, Warrenstown, and we have the evening service by 6 p.m. in the church hall at St. Patrick's here in Donacloni. And also, you know, as you're watching, we still have our online service, which is the 11.30 a.m. Well, we hope that you can join us in all these services and in our weekly activities as it comes. Um, can I remind you from uh, the video we saw last week, if you want to give to Beirut, uh, things that is happening in Beirut, you know, to support the work of God in Beirut after the explosion, you can give through gift, give.net slash help Beirut or tiafund.org. Well, if you want to come into our in-church service, we would like you to uh, to book ahead of time. So you can ring uh, Stephen on this number, 077-16-099-170. And if you want to attend the one in Warristown, would you please give Jane Patterson a ring on 077-84-00438. Well, as we come to meet the Lord, let's uh, start using this word from John chapter 1, verse 29. The Bible says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Probably you see behind me, I've got some lambs. Uh, who are there at the background and children today we're going to learn about the lamb that is higher than other lambs that we know the story in exodus actually points to the lamb of god it points to jesus christ and jesus is the son of god the lamb of god that takes away the sin of god he brought us back to the lord restoring relationship this is all we're going to learn today so as we begin our service let me open for us in prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together to learn at your feet and to worship. As we worship this morning, we pray that we will know more of your presence with us. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's join together as we sing our opening song, God Always Keep His Promise.
Most times as children, we do things wrong, but we are thankful that we have a God who wants to draw close to us. And we can always say sorry to God for all the bad things we have done. So this morning to help us say sorry to God, we're gonna use the word of confession. You'll find it on your screen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write your law in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father has promised full forgiveness to all who come to him with true repentance and faith in his Son. God forgives us because Jesus is the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Amen. Well, we're going to have a video now, and the video is titled Moses and the Exodus. And after that video, we have uh, children from our Sunday school uh, will lead us in our prayer. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh -oh. So Moses ran away from Egypt uh -oh. to the land of Midian. Uh -oh. After many years, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses ah! and told him to go back to Egypt to free the Israelites. After much protesting, God granted Moses his brother Aaron to speak on his behalf. Ooh. So Moses went to Egypt. Damn, and on his way there, he met Aaron who was ready to do whatever God wanted him to do. The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians, but God had a special plan for Moses. Hey, huh? yeah. After rallying God's people to them, Moses and Aaron went to the Pharaoh. and said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has said. Let my people go. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh made the Israelites work harder because of this. The foremen of the Israelite slaves were angry with Moses and Aaron for causing this trouble. Uh, huh? uh. So Moses cried out to God and asked why this was happening. But God said, you will see what I will do. I am the Lord. I will deliver you from slavery. Wow, okay. Hey. Moses told this to the people. Hey, hey. But they were so discouraged that they didn't listen to him. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and to do exactly as he said. So Moses and Aaron went to the Pharaoh. Hey. God told them to take the staff and throw it down before Pharaoh. Huh? Pharaoh was not impressed. He called his wise men and sorcerers and they did the same thing. Ooga, ooga. <laughs> but Aaron's staff swallowed up the sorcerer's staff. Uh? Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them. Shoo, shoo. Just 
as God had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the banks of the Nile River and meet Pharaoh. Hey, Pharaoh! Come on. Moses and Aaron did just as God had said. Oh. But again, Pharaoh's magicians oh, no, did the no. same miracle, Ta-da. and Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. <laughs> so God sent nine more plagues to Egypt to show his power. Even with all the suffering, Pharaoh's heart stayed hard, and he would not let the people go. On the night of the last plague, Pharaoh woke up and heard a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house in Egypt where someone was not dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and told him to be gone with the Israelites. So the Israelites left Egypt immediately and made their way to the Promised Land, taking with them many riches from Egypt, and they took Joseph's bones as they had promised him many years before. But after they had gone, Pharaoh changed his mind and readied his army to take back the Israelites. When the Israelites saw Pharaoh and his armies come, they were terrified. But God made a way for them. Through all of this, the Israelites saw the great power of their God, the one true God, and they put their trust in Moses, his servant. Dear God, thank you for your love and protection. Amen. Sorry, Lord, for all the bad things we have done. Help us to love and put our trust in you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. And thank you, Jesus, for making us friends with God. Lord God, bless our nation. Lord God, bless our nation. And give us your peace. Amen. Lord Jesus, bless each family and friends in our church. Many thanks to the children from our Sunday school who have led us in our prayers. Let's continue in our service as we do our memory verse. Our memory verse is found in Exodus chapter 12 verse 13 the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you now i want you to say this with some words that are missing and i hope you'll be able to remember those words exodus 12 13 the will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Okay, we're going to take out two words this time, and we'll see if we can remember the missing words. You ready? Exodus 12, 13. The will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the, I will pass over you. For the fourth time, we will take away three words and we'll see if you can still remember the missing words. Let's see if you can fill the gap. Exodus 12, 13. The will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the, I will, you. Okay. Well, you've all done really well. Well done, everybody. Now we're going to say it all together and the words, the missing words will be replaced so we can all say it together. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. The blood will be a sign for you 
on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Let's say it again. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Thank you. Are you serving Captain Jesus? He's the master of the wind and waves. There's yo ho ho, no other name by which you can be saved. Through scurvy, shark and shipwreck, in every storm and strife, sail on with Captain Jesus as the treasure of your life. Climb the rigging. Swab the deck. Aye, aye, Row the longboat. And dance the hornpipe now. Heave away, haul away. Heave away, haul. He's the master of the wind and waves. There's yo ho ho, no other name by which you can be saved. Through scurvy, shock, and shipwreck, in every storm and strife, sail on with Captain Jesus as the treasure of your life. Aye, aye, Captain. said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbour having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when, the, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they ate the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with the bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the fire, head, legs and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, with uh, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. 
the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you no destructive plague will touch you when i strike egypt good morning everyone and uh, it's good to see you again it's good that we can come together to share from god's word but i'm not here by myself Today, I've got a friend with me, and uh, my friend is called a sheep, although she has got another cute name, but she's going to sit down just right on my hand and listen to the story that I have to share with every one of you. So, boys and girls, are you ready to hear from God's word? Yes, if you're ready to hear from God's word, I want you to put your hands together and bow down your head and let me pray with you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because you love us so much, and we thank you because we can listen to your word. Help us to understand your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, what is the story that I want to tell you? You'll find that story in this big book, which is called the Bible. The story, you find it in Exodus chapter 12, from verse 1 to verse 14. Yes, it's the story about a group of people in the Bible. They are called the people of God. And actually, they belong to a country or a tribe or a group of people. We call them the Israelites. Okay, yes. Why do we call them Israelites? Yes, because they're from Israel. Now, not the nation Israel, but it came from a descendant which is called Israel. Okay, but this group of people, they were living in another country. The name of the other country is Egypt. And while they were living in Egypt, things were very, very hard for them. They were, things were very tough for them because they were held like slaves and they were being tortured. You know, they didn't get good so, I mean, good, they, they were not looked after by the people in Egypt. But God was planning a way of escape for these people. And God have decided to make a way to set them free from those people that have been torturing them, people that have been mean to them, people that have been so bad to them. And while God was preparing to do this, God decided to tell them something about the Passover. Now, what is Passover? It is actually a festival in Israel, but it is a significant one because every time they celebrate this festival is a significant event in the history of Israel. But what happens at Passover? If you look into your Bible, God was telling them to do some things which displays or teaches them about God's love and protection. Do you want to say that after me? God's love and protection. Let's say that again. God's love and protection. So if you read from our reading today, from verse 1 to verse 11, it's all about the preparation for this event, which is called the Passover. You see, in verse 1, the Bible says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family. A lamb for his family. Well, I've got a friend here, and it only reminds us of that lamb and that event. So each person or each household were to take a lamb. But what should they do with the lamb? See, the whole story is here. It tells them what to do with the lamb, the preparation they have to do. It says the animal you choose must be year old males without defects verse 5 and you make them i mean you may take them from the sheep or the goats now god is a loving god god loves everyone but god uses 
something to remind them of his love and how much he wants to look after them and protect them. So all they have to do is to take a sign, just make a sign and put it at the doorstep of their house. So the sign actually will go at the doorstep so that anybody who wants to come in or go out, you can see it. But God said, whenever you have a sign, it's a red sign, actually is the blood. So it talks about the blood of the lamb. So the lamb is going to be killed. And then the blood is used as a sign on the doorpost. But why? Why should they do that? It's because something bad was going to happen. And God wants to protect his people. Some people actually are going to die. Their enemies, people who have been mean to them, God wants to judge them. So for the judgment of God, God is saying, for me to identify you, and skip over you so that you don't get judged, you have to do this. Get a lamb and use the blood of the lamb as a sign. Well, they all did it. And when evening came, the judgment of God happened. All the people in Israel were saved from the destruction. And as we can see in verse 12, on that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. So what does this blood mean? The Bible says in verse 13, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague, there is nothing bad, will touch you when I strike Egypt. So, this is what happened. When the Lord was judging, the people of Israel were spared from destruction. So, this shows the purpose of God to deal with evil and his character of mercy to protect his own. But what does, it, what does it all mean? It points beyond the little lamb whose blood was meant as a sign to show so that God will skip over people and destruction will not come to them. It's far beyond that. It's actually pointing to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians. I have it here, chapter 5, verse 7. And what does it mean? In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it's pointing to the Lamb of God. And who is the Lamb of God? Jesus is the Lamb of God. And he was slain. He died on the cross to set us free. And through the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross, we are offered salvation. It means we can be friends with God again. Do you want to see with me in 1 Corinthians? Let's see what it says together. Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and I will read quickly verse 7. See what it says. It says, Get rid of the old yeast that you may be, that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Jesus is our Passover lamb. So the lamb that was used that time points to Jesus, the lamb that was sacrificed so that you and I can be friends again with God. So today, boys and girls, we've learned about the great event that happened many, many years ago in Israel. We've learned about the sign of the blood. We've learned about the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, that was sacrificed so that we can be friends again with God. And what does this remind us? It reminds us about God's love and His protection. So, as I finish this, half, this morning, I want you to remember that Jesus is the Lamb of God, 
that takes away the sin of the world. And by his death, God has shown us how much he loved us and how much he cared for us. So, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your great love and the sacrifice of your son that has brought us life. Help us to trust in you at all time. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay, boys and girls, we're so glad that you were able to enjoy the service of today. And we bless God for the le lesson we've learned. We've learned about God's love and protection 
and also we've learned that Jesus is the one that saves us from the judgment of sin and death and as we finish let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.